is there such a thing as a soulmate? Stick around and let's talk about it today on this episode. Let's hit it. Greetings everyone, my name is Dr. Phoenix Singh. I wanna warmly welcome you to our channel as well as this episode where we're going to be chatting a little bit about the concept of soulmates uh, and my personal opinion on it. And to be honest with you, that's exactly what this is. This is my personal, uh, biblically-based opinion on the existence of soulmates in a modern context. Uh, so, at the end of the day, this is something where it's uh, a video that I hope will be relevant to not only many of you, but also to many of your friends, other people in your small group, congregation, etc. So I do want to encourage you to not only like this video and subscribe to our channel, hit that bell so you get notifications, but also to share it with those individuals who you may think may have fun listening to this. Uh, so let's go ahead, I think, and jump right in, and when we're done with this video, please feel free to subscribe to our social media accounts, uh, which you can find right down here. So I'll put you out of your misery and tell you right up front that no, I do not see any biblical evidence for the concept of a soulmate unless you are really, really stretching scripture. Uh, I just personally do not. Uh, I actually deeply believe that the concept of a soulmate uh, is antithetical to Christianity. And that's a very strong statement. Uh, and I'm usually very sensitive and careful when I make statements that strong. So let me walk you through my thinking on this, okay? So just some, some questions, right? And they're a little bit rhetorical. Uh, if you're Christian and you're watching this channel, uh, and if you're not, still stay with me, please. Uh, as, as somebody who was you know, an atheist for most of my life, um, I totally understand where you're coming from. So, uh, first question. Do you believe that human beings are perfect? Yes or no? I'm assuming you're going to say no. Human beings aren't perfect. Okay. Do you believe that God loves you? Classic answer would be yes, you do. Okay, do you believe that you deserve, that you are entitled to God's love, to his perfect love? Now, the, the Christian answer to that question is no, that you are, you are not entitled to God's love, that Christ dying for us is the thing that enables us to be able to receive the just never-ending perfect love unconditional love of God. It grants us access to these covenants with God that uh, before Christ uh, were something that uh, Gentiles did not have access to. It is only through Christ that that is possible that we have access to that. So we're not born entitled to this, okay? Now, do you believe that it is our job as Christians on this earth to try and practice being Christ-like? Now, I would say yes, and as a Christian man, uh, I take it very seriously that, you know, my job is to, to treat men and women uh, as close as possible to how I would uh, hope I understand Christ would treat them. And let me tell you, I fail every day. I'm pretty terrible at it, right? I'm doing my best and I'm getting better, and that's all that I can do. But all of us are terrible at it. When you look in the Bible, even in terms of Old Testament, people like, you know, David and Solomon, you know, these people deeply, deeply loved by God, right? Where, where new covenants were forged, for example, with King David, you know, that's how much God just saw David and says, wow, it's just so amazing. But David was like a really imperfect guy. I mean, he did some really terrible things. Uh, and when you read the Old Testament and, uh, you know, you, you go through, you know, Samuel, where you'll kind of, you know, see these stories. Uh, oh my gosh, you'll read it. And it kind of made me feel great when I first read it. Because I'm like, you know, thank goodness that, you know, this totally flawed and perfect man who is just as flawed as myself. I'm sure I'm far more flawed than he. Uh, that God loves him so perfectly. And this just kind of blew my mind. It was amazing. And it really kind of 
gave me a new perspective on faith because there was no, you know, perfect person, right? The, the closest to perfect that we've got is Christ, right? And so because of that, that's who we should be modeling ourselves after on this earth. That's what we need to do is to practice being Christ-like, okay? Which means being unconditionally loving and only God can grant us unconditional love. It is putting so much pressure and it is, it, it is something that will always fail if we expect our spouse to be unconditionally loving. Only God can do that. No human being would say that no matter what you do, there is nothing you could do that would make me love you an iota less, okay? Which is not the case when it comes to God. God's love is truly unconditional. It is only we who pull ourselves further from God. God doesn't walk away from us. God is stable, right? We're the ones who end up leaving, okay? In some way, shape, or form, through our behavior or our attitude, okay? And so here's the thing. If God loves you, even though that you're totally imperfect, right? Even though you don't deserve it, does that not mean that to practice being Christ-like means that having a partner, because our partner ain't perfect, sorry, if you're watching this video and you're single and you think to yourself, I'm going to find a perfect person. The perfect, uh, the person is gonna be perfect for me, right? Which is usually how people, uh, how people operationalize a soulmate, is somebody who is perfect for you, right? And usually they think perfect means we're not going to have any arguments. We're not going to have very severe disagreements with each other. You know, we're always going to love each other, but we're also always going to like each other at every moment through every situation. Uh, you have got another thing coming to you, right? And you will, you will see that uh, as you get deeper into relationships. Now, it's something where to have a, an imperfect person, a perfectly imperfect person, that disagrees with us and argues with us, etc., and to love them, not because of it all the time, because you won't always feel like that. In some cases, it's loving them in spite of that. In some cases, it's respecting them in spite of certain actions that may warrant disrespect, a total lack of respect, okay? To do those things is to practice being Christ-like, okay? Because we are so imperfect and Christ loves us regardless. Okay, now the only difference between us trying to be Christ-like in Christ is Christ can do it perfectly and we as human beings are going to fail doing this every day of our relationship, of our marriage. We're going to fail every day, but the goal is the pursuit. And most important to recognize is that God honors the pursuit because you are pursuing him through that behavior. Think about like Book of James, right? Your actions God will honor and support them and help you. He will make that road straight and make it easier than it would be if you didn't have him in your life because he honors the effort. He doesn't expect you to be perfect all the time. The entire Bible, especially the Old Testament, is just over and over again, God expressing his love, doing things for his children, and then them just essentially betraying or just paying no attention to him whatsoever, saying, I can do it better, I can do it my own way, right? But his love for us was and is perfect. In other words, to have a true soulmate, right? Someone who is completely and utterly more perfect than anyone else is contrary to Christianity, in my opinion. And the reason why I believe that it is contrary to the faith is that we deeply appreciate brokenness in our faith. Brokenness is not only what we all are, but it is the thing that makes Christ and God special. It is the thing that makes them transcendent. It is the reason why we have faith in the first place. To feel entitled to perfection in a partner, to someone who is going to tick every one of our boxes, who's going to, you know, let's say that you're a young lady and you want a guy who's going to be, you know, six packs of abs, uh, over six foot tall, uh, you know, never curses, goes to church every single Sunday, uh, is going to be spiritual head of the household who you want to follow every single second of your life. Uh, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. No one 
is so perfect in all of these different ways. Although I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments below saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I go to church, I got a six pack and I'm over six feet tall. Uh, and God bless you, it's wonderful, right? Uh, but you get the idea that I'm going for here, right? So it's very important uh, to, to respect the process of love. I say that love is a verb, okay? Love is a verb. Love is something that you do, right? It can be an attitude that you have and I think that's wonderful. But it is also, it has to be reflected in your actions and your behaviors. Uh, someone that I dated once said to me, um, even though I don't say that, I, that I'm grateful for the things that you do, and even though I don't act like I'm grateful for them, it should be enough for you to know that deep down, I'm grateful. And that's basically what I'm getting at here is that it's insufficient, okay? Because it's a verb. Gratitude is a verb. Love is a verb. These things are verbs, right? And it's very important, hence, to be able to act out that love, that appreciation for a partner even if it's something where they are imperfect because all of us are imperfect and it's only through Christ, right? And the reason why that relationship with Christ is so important, right? Is that, remember, this is God and this is you, this is everybody else, right? The reason this is longer is that that relationship between you and God is so much more important, so much more important that you get right and as a foundation before you pursue lifetime relationships with anyone else because if you're not anchored in God's unconditional love then you will expect it from a partner and that can be very dangerous all right everyone thank you so much for joining me for this little discussion today I always appreciate your thoughts so please do feel free to comment below uh, again it really helps us out on the YouTube algorithm not only if you comment especially if you like the video but also if you like this video subscribe to our channel and please do be sure to share this video with anyone who you think may enjoy it maybe from your congregation maybe from your small group maybe a friend or a loved one and if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with me to be be able to talk about these kinds of relational issues, please do feel free to contact me via the website below and it would be a pleasure to book an appointment with you. This is Dr. Singh signing off everyone. God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your day. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed that episode and you'd like to see more original content, then please do click on one of the links right here. I hope to see you in the next one.